This is Nat with the Other Side Nursery. Today we're going to be making a bog planter for carnivorous plants, specifically hardy North American pitcher plants and the Venus flytrap. So all these over here are going to be completely hardy here in zone 8B, uh, which is Portland, the Portland general area. Um, they can be a little bit more sensitive with uh, uh, areas that can get a little bit colder, but they're completely hardy here. So let's get started. What you would need are, of course, the carnivorous plants. I have a Venus flytrap over here, um, three different Saracenias. Um, of course, you would need a little planter, uh, whatever size you want. Generally, it doesn't have to be too deep or anything like that. The root system is fairly shallow, but you still want to have a good depth to it. You don't want to do like a completely shallow pot or anything like that because the wind will just knock it right down. And as for the potting soil media, you want to use uh, sphagnum peat moss, half sphagnum peat moss, and half perlite. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly half, but half is generally a good ratio. Um, so let's get started. I haven't really done much uh, in preparation. So all these are just pretty much how they have been looking um, since uh, the beginning of spring here. And yes, yeah, spring barely started here. Um, it's been rainy, it's been cold, it's almost summer. Summer starts next week actually, but that's a different issue there. So yeah, first um, you just kind of unpot it. I'm just gonna throw everything on the ground just because I'm outside. There's grass everywhere, there's dirt everywhere, so why not? So yeah, remove all the soil or as much as you can. You can leave it in a little ball, but I just want the roots to be able to spread out a little bit. Um, and I just wanna make sure that it doesn't just stay in one clump. So I'm just pulling off the moss here shaking off some of the old soil, the old mix that I used last year. Um, yeah. Funny thing is, I had my dad help me uh, with the Saracenias last year. He didn't really understand that um, I only wanted him to divide it and he started chopping away at the roots. So a lot of my plant's roots are kinda short right now, but that shouldn't be such a big problem. So, one down. This one. Yeah, sometimes you'll find weeds. Just pull the weeds out because they'll just end up encrusting the whole, the whole planter. Pull out any of the mushy old leaves that you might encounter. Shake it off a little bit. It doesn't have to be too clean. Some people will want to clean it off, but I don't really think that's 100% necessary especially with healthier plants. Um, sometimes, a lot of times you'll find worms. Um, some of them are fine, some of them are not great, but I just kind of remove the worms anyway. Um, of course, being outside, worms will be everywhere, especially in a wet climate. Uh, this one over here, oh, this one over, yeah, there's a lot of water in here, but uh, this one has a lot of wild uh, weeds in it. Uh, this one is a little, I don't know, some sort of, Viola, 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 but gonna take all that out. Um, I personally like seeing little weeds and stuff in my plants, but they make uh, repotting a little bit more difficult. I just think it looks a little bit more natural, less sterile. But for this one, we'll just pull it out. And then with Venus fly traps, you don't have to go as, um, you don't wanna do too much to them just because they're a little bit more delicate. So what I'm going to do is take it out like this and then just kinda take out some of the old leaves uh, and the pictures or the traps are leaves, by the way. And also, there's a little um, 
Sundew over here. This is a uh, Drosera filiformis. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. Uh, it will fill out the whole pot um, by the end of summer. Uh, they seed readily. Um, I usually have a whole, I don't want to say mess, but a whole pot of them uh, by the end of summer. I like them. Um, they get a little bit messy though, especially when you're trying to work around them because your hand will graze at it and then it'll just leave sticky goo all over your arms and hand. Alright, so this is how I'm going to leave the Venus flytraps just because they are a little bit more delicate. Um, as for the Saracenias, a little bit more exposed. Uh, oops. Now... So, with this, just dump it right in. Spread it around a little bit. So, you kind of want to have the taller stuff towards the back, unless you want to have like a table centerpiece kind of thing, then maybe towards the middle. But I don't know where I'm going with this, so I'm just going to put it towards a center-ish, back-ish kind of thing. Let me mount it all the way just because it will flatten down a little bit. So let me put you on. Let me go get a little bit more soil. All right, back with a little bit more soil. And I'm just gonna mound this a little bit. Mound it up. I should mix a little bit better in there, but that's fine. Yeah, because when you water, this whole thing will shrink down a little bit. So you wanna make sure that you have a little bit of a mounding action. All right, so this Saracenia oreophila looking thing, just put it in there. You wanna make sure that the rhizome is above the soil line or else it will rot. Um, so, pull that out again. So the rhizome would be the stem looking thing, um, pretty much down here. I don't wanna cover more than this much of it. So roots underneath, rhizome on top. Um, the roots sometimes will stick out of the soil line, but that's fine. Uh, they do that in the wild. It's not the worst thing in the world for them. So one. And then this Saracenia catsbei. Catsbei? Catsbei? Um, it's just a little hybrid. I'm just gonna put it over here. So... So that the lower stuff I'm just gonna treat it as uh, this bog will be facing that direction. So uh, taller stuff in the back. This is a Leucophila hybrid. Um, technically it does get tall, but I'm just gonna pair it up with this uh, Leucophila since um, they do, they look nicely grown together. Um, let me pull out a little bit more of that moss stuff so it doesn't look like a chunk of moss and pack it in and then shift it a little bit with the Venus fly trap I'll put it towards the front since they will not get as tall as these other ones um, and yeah I'm just gonna put it in there like that I'm just gonna leave the filiformis a little huh? Let me actually move the Philip. No. Uh, hmm. What I'm doing now is splitting it a little bit because I want the uh, Saras or sorry, Drosera filiformis to be not clumped in with the Venus flytrap. Um, with Venus flytraps, they do divide pretty easily. This should be fine um, as long as you water it pretty well and just kind of leave it alone. And I'm gonna pinch off this little flower over here. Just because it's such a small plant, I don't want the energy to be spent too much on that flower. So, I'm putting this over here. And this one over here. Stand up for this. Actually, let me move the look off a lot back a little bit. And of course, um, 
with plants and garden and most things in life there's no right way there's no wrong way there's uh ways that work and ways that things don't work um the way you want it to so uh please don't complain about my method this is just what works for me um there we go and what i forgot is water so let me put this on pause so note on watering so here in the portland area we can use tap water just because it is pretty soft um it is low in total dissolved solids i wouldn't really recommend it for other cities unless you know how your water is um when in doubt just use uh, reverse osmosis water um, distilled water or rain water uh, that's usually most people's go-to but here in portland we can use the hose um, unfortunately though in about three years uh, my tap water will be changing or um, the water distributor uh, they're going with groundwater so I have to see how that goes because I do have a lot of carnivorous plants I have to water every summer and uh, we'll see how that goes so yeah I'm gonna be using uh, hose water Just go at it. Oof. Okay, so maybe, <laughs> maybe not like that. Um, it would help also if you pre-wet the soil before watering because dry so drier soil takes a little bit more to absorb the water. But it's not the worst thing. Um, yeah, it's pretty messy. Please don't do what I'm doing. Other than the soil being displaced, as you can see, it's starting to shrink down a little bit. Um, that's because the soil is compacting down. That's completely normal, but I just did it in a messy way. So this is uh, this is what you shouldn't do. <laughs> You want to shake it a little bit just so that everything works itself down and then water a little bit more and then it'll take a few weeks or so before all the saracenias and um, the venus flytrap settles down it'll um if there's a fairly strong wind storm or anything like that coming along just make sure you uh, stake up your plant the taller ones just um, maybe with a chopstick and some string or so so that it doesn't go flopping everywhere other than that What I forgot to mention is you can use pots without drainage, but uh, the water will be a little bit more stagnant with uh, with that. Uh, so I recommend pots with drainage. And you can also place stuff like this in a giant saucer uh, just to make sure it holds its, uh, the water reservoir. I will send this off without the saucer though because first of all I don't have saucers for it um, but you can also water it fairly often and I'm getting water dripped on me um, you can just water it uh, you know during the dry season water it pretty much almost every day um, unfortunately uh, they just really love that water um, yeah set it in full sun um, this thing will fill out the pot next year uh, some plants will grow faster than others and you know that's how it goes uh, but yeah sending this off thank you for joining